Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Before we start this video, I want to give you a little explanation. This video is about a server for multi Teftaro that I used to build. And this has been a few years now. I think maybe 2013 and 2014. But it was a fantastic period and I would like to tell you about it. This got to be the largest video that I ever made. I had to record and ensemble nearly 200 clips. And on top of that also prepare a full description for every clip that you will hear over almost the whole video. The clips were recorded while the server was not online but hosted locally on my PC. So you will not see any other players in this video. For your convenience I have posted timestamps and chapters for those who want to watch the video more specifically or for those who want to watch it in parts. I now present to you my version of GTA, an MTA documentary. What is MTA? MTA is a program named Multiteftaro. This program allows you to play GTA San Andreas online. Even before San Andreas was made, MTA already made it possible to play GTA Vice City online. San Andreas is so customizable that in MTA you will find all kinds of game modes in a whole range of available servers. From free roam to racing, roleplay, zombies, even copies from other games. I once played on a server that was a replica of Rocket League, but in San Andreas. I used to have my own server in MTA for a couple of years and my server had a lot to do. And this is what this video is about. There is a short history behind my decision to create my own server. I have already made a video about this and I will link it in the video description if anyone wants to find out more. What was the server's point? The intention of my server was to create a crazy place with lots of possibilities and where you can grow with your character in the game. Not growing literally, but rather in terms of possessions. It's hard to say what kind of game mode my server was. You could race, do missions, shoot zombies, roleplay or just mess around. A little bit like GTA 5 online you could make money through all kinds of activities and there was twice as many ways to spend your money including special armed vehicles or special attack cheats that were beneficial in certain activities or just to troll players. There was so much to do that I even made a digital manual book for the players to give an overview of what the server had to offer. That is why I have neatly arranged all parts via timestamps for those who want to watch this video more specifically. New players When a new player connected to the server, they had to download the server files first. In order not to keep this waiting time too boring, I had a map for them where they could spawn and stunt with vehicles. Players who were already logged in could just join these players if they wanted to. Once the download was completed, players would get the login screen. The first thing players had to do when connecting to the server was making an account and logging in. Digital manual book once the player logged in, he was advised to check the digital manual book. The digital manual book was over 20 pages, but very user friendly and not that confusing. This was also necessary to name and point out literally everything. Now we will first go quickly through each page, but later in the video we will check everything from those pages piece by piece. First, the players were shown a very brief overview with the meanings of some basic map icons. They could also immediately find out that there are several free vehicles available if they went to the vehicle stores. The next page 
is a more detailed description of what the players can expect to be able to do on the server. But to be fair, this is still a short description. Then they got an overview of the bind keys and bind commands. On the next page, they got an overview of the most ways to make money on the server. The next two pages show where on the map you can find the shops where you can buy different types of vehicles. After this, the players got information about the zombies and the XP point system. They could also get information about the different ranks that players could get for free by means of sufficient playing time. These ranks also had their privileges. Then they got an overview of the functions on the smartphone and how you can keep a dog. The server was also pretty much fully modded. Most of the vehicles, most of the character skins, all weapons. The next page then gave instructions on how players can activate these mods. The next three pages together are the map legend. Everything nicely marked with numbers and spread over three pages. But sit tight, there is even more. The next two pages were the hunting jobs. Then a page with instructions about the police and prison. After that a page with instructions for gang wars and turf wars. Explanation of how to race and to do death matches with other players. On the next page the players got an overview of certain special locations that they should definitely visit. Some of these locations also had unique jobs or activities. The page after that gave extra attention to the very special activities with for example a self-made Slenderman version or a 3D Angry Birds game. If that wasn't enough, there was also my biggest project I worked for on my server. The World of Killuminati. Inspired by World of Warcraft. Never fully finished, but more on this later in the video. Next was information on how to buy or even rent houses. Instructions about the black market and how to sell weapons. There was also a selfie cam available and on the next page were instructions on how to take a selfie and screenshot and then share it on the Facebook page of the server. And finally server rules for the players and also for the staff members. The first steps. After logging in, players got spawned in Los Santos. They had a little bit of money like $2000. Blue players often first went to the skin shop, car shop and ammunition store and then people kept asking in the server, how can I earn money in this server? Well, how could you make money in the server? There were tons of basic and more special civilian jobs that players could do. One could also perform a certain service such as a police officer or a medic. Hacking the police computer also made you money if you could do it. Across the entire map were base jumping locations with each jump also giving a small cash reward. Killing zombies also paid very well and more than the cost of ammunition. Creating weapons in the black market and selling them to other players. Doing gang war missions all over the map. You could also earn money with special missions based on other games. There was even a boat that brought you to $35,000 for free just by standing and waiting. Good for those who went AFK. Pick up and deliver a suitcase. Ditto with vehicles. You could search for treasures of the treasure hunt or wanted dead alive activities. If you were in a gang yourself, you could also do turf wars, which also paid money per captured turf. If you were rich, you could buy houses and apartments that you could then rent to other players. Maybe this doesn't seem like super much, but when we soon go into more detail, you will see that it's not a little at all. The scoreboard. 
there was also a scoreboard where players could see a list of all the other players. In this scoreboard they could see how much money a player had, his total playtime on the server, his gang name, his zombie level and rank, location tags and wanted stars. This was very useful for players to find others who were online at that moment and who spoke the same language or who were in the same gang. Also for police to find wanted people. Free vehicles Every player on the server also had some free vehicles. There was a quad bike, a Yoshi BMX and a hot dog and hamburger car. Players had to activate the server mods to actually see the reasons behind the vehicle names. The special vehicles the special vehicles were a nice reward for those who had made a lot of money after a lot of playing time. You could buy these at the special store on the army base. There was a car that could fly and sail on water. A warship with working cannons. A small airship that could shoot two rockets from the front. A radar vehicle with which you could call an airstrike every X number of minutes. For free. An army truck that shoots 8 rockets at the same time. A derby car which shoots rockets from the front and also from the back. I also had a large UFO which you could use to attack with an asteroid ray. A helicopter where players could stand in while it's flying. Good for shootouts from above. Next we had the normal Rhino tank with a nice skin mod. Same for the Hydra jet. There was another radar truck which attack was atomic bombs. Just like with the airstrike you could drop atomic bombs on the spot. One of the most special vehicles was this thing. It could fly, make itself invisible, it could launch rockets from the front and from the back, and it could also make airstrikes from the bottom. You could do a lot with this vehicle. The smartphone. The players also each had a smartphone with a bunch of apps. Let's see which one each. You have a setting menu, where you have a few options and also options for the graphics. I chose Winamp with a very long list of internet radios. With the Mark Players app, you could place an icon on a specific player or players so that you can quickly find each other via the radar. PayPal is undoubtedly for transferring money to other players. You could also do this via ATMs. Skype is also very clear. This is to have private conversations with other players who are online in the server. CJ customization. Here, players who had the skin of CJ could customize the look of CJ to their liking, also for free. The following app had the option for the players to change the color of their nickname. You could also use the laser app to activate a laser on your weapon. You could also choose the color of the laser beam. The GPS was very handy and easy to use. You clicked on the icon and the map of the game appeared on your screen. You just had to click on a location and then you had a red line on the streets of your route. And all you had to do was follow this red line to your destination. The next app was the Garage app, where you had an overview of all your purchased vehicles. And through this app you could spawn these vehicles and also repair damage. You could also lock the car so that no one else could drive away with it. There was also a separate app with which you could activate neon lighting under your car. Another vehicle related app is the engine app that allows you to turn on and off the vehicle's engine and lights. 
The animation app is an app that gave you an overview of all the animations from the original San Andreas game. So players could do these animations with their character. The mask app was an app that allowed you to place Mimi faces over the face of your character. These were also often very funny when you unexpectedly see someone who was using it. With the following app you could adjust the walking style of your character. You could use the app afterwards to change your fighting style. This option was not for free. The next app was the pet app, with which you could buy and train a dog. But more on this in the next section. In addition, the server store app where you had a wide range of things that you could buy. I will come back to this in a moment to go through all these offers. There was also a calendar that was occasionally used to announce certain events. A calculator, for whatever reason, every smartphone has one. You could also play the classic game Snake or a 2D copter game or even the good old known Flappy Birds. Finally, you had the camera app that you could use to take selfies or just photos of nice things. The bank. Instead of using the PayPal app on the phone, players could also go to any of the bank locations and send money to other people or to add money on their bank accounts. It was also possible to rob some of the banks but the script doesn't seem to work anymore right now so I cannot show you a bank robbery unfortunately. Dogs. The dogs were also very popular. First you had to choose a breed and color. Give the dog a name and then you had a dog. You could spawn the dog anywhere and it would follow you everywhere. You could train the dog to get a higher fitness and strain score. These scores were useful for the playful battles dogs could do against each other. You also had to feed your dog in time and play with him through fetching the ball. As your dog was properly trained, you could learn new tricks that he will do on command for his owner. The phone store. The store available over the phone had a lot to offer. While many offers were useful to use on the spot, some of these prices were quite high compared to the other offers for the same things on the locations on the map. This was to motivate the players for example to buy ammo in a shop or to heal people as a medic. We will quickly review what the players could spend their money on through this store. Players could buy melee weapons, armor, a parachute, skills that give you more HP or bigger lungs or that you will never fall off your bike. Players could also buy drugs through this store and each drug had its own effect. These effects worked out after 3 minutes. When a player bought a drug, the player had an icon above his head. It allowed others to see what kind of cheat the player was using. For example, buying weed had a low gravity effect that make you move slower, but you could jump higher or just have fun with a bicycle or motorcycle. Speed goes without saying that the speed of your character became twice as fast. You could then run as fast or drive very fast with cars. This was very useful if you were forced to escape somewhere or during a firefight. This made you twice as fast also for firing bullets. There was also a drug that let you breathe underwater so you didn't have to go to the surface for 3 minutes. This was also very useful at times or for some searching activities since some things could be underwater. Next up were the bullet cheats. These cheats also lasted 3 minutes before working out. Players using a bullet cheat also get a certain icon above their heads during these minutes. There were explosive bullets, Molotov cocktail bullets, rocket bullets, not all bullet cheats were aggressive, 
you could also shoot paintballs or even beach balls. If you could hit someone with such a beach ball, it could be that the player fell on the ground. The teleport bullets were also very interesting. Of course you teleport what you shoot at. This way you could also teleport to a longer or higher distance depending on the weapon you used. The last bullet cheat is rather something you could roll people with. The power bullets. With this you could shoot at vehicles which then bounced off as if a heavy truck hits them. Once you kept firing at the vehicle you could also keep it in the air. If you did this with the vehicle that had another player in it then he was surely and probably irritated. The grapple gun was also something that players liked very much and it was undoubtedly very useful in many situations and missions. The grapple gun fired a hook with a cable that then pulled you along. This was very useful for climbing or getting on top quickly. It was also possible to hang from a height on a wall or a rock to shoot at other players from that position and quickly shoot yourself to another location with the grapple gun. You could kinda do the same with the teleport bullets but the grapple gun was much better. It was also possible to get yourself on moving or flying vehicles by shooting yourself at them with a grapple gun. Whoever bought a grapple gun kept it until the ammo was used up. Another cheat were the super weapons that changed from single to dual weapons when the cheat was bought and with endless bullets, so also without reloading. In addition to the weapon cheats, there were plenty of other cheats that were useful or enjoyable for the players. Players could buy a wall hack, which they could use to see from a distance where and behind which object a player or AI bot was standing. This was very useful in many activities. Players could also make themselves invisible. After a minute and a half, this worked out. Players could also shoot fireworks from their location for a minute, as if it was coming from their pockets. This was fun for other players to watch, or for you to lure other players into a tunnel, as these fireworks act as a weapon in small areas. It was also possible to use the firework as a weapon against airplanes or helicopters. Players could also be semi-invisible and ghost other players for one minute. The next cheat was the most popular cheat on the server, the Superman cheat, which allowed players to fly their character like Superman. For various reasons, players spawned to a certain location when they activated this cheat, which also taught them how to fly. It was not intended that when the players were in a particular activity that they could cheat with Superman. For most activities, if a player had the Superman cheat, this cheat was turned off when starting an activity, so players who wanted to activate the cheat during an activity were also removed from the activity by teleporting them when activating the cheat. There was also a cheat which made you jump 3 times as high as normal. And there was also a cheat that could do the same if you were on a BMX. I also had cheats for vehicles. There was another popular cheat that allowed you to fly with cars. This cheat had no time limit but it stopped working once you got out of the vehicle. There was also the possibility to sail on the water with another cheat. Those who did not want to pay this cheat every time could save money for a special vehicle that could always fly and sail, but also drive of course. While you fly a lot with cars, you could also damage your vehicle a lot while colliding against buildings. This is why I also had a cheat that allowed you to immortalize your vehicle for a few minutes and therefore it did not took damage when colliding against the building. There were also some super attacks and super weapons available through the store. You could place dynamite and run away. You could also play dynamite that then pushes large stones away. Or how about dynamite that pushes car wrecks away. These stones or car wrecks could also hit other players and they could lose HP as a result. The better super weapons were the airstrikes. 
the asteroid attacks, iron cannon or even a nuclear bomb. These super weapons were also available with the special armed vehicles and whoever had such a vehicle did not have to pay for these attacks as long as they triggered it through the vehicle. To prevent cheats or super weapons from being misused, I had set a timer to reuse the feature again. Also, during an attack from a super weapon, you yourself did no damage to yourself in that attack, not even to the special armed vehicles you were in. But once the attack was over, you could get damage again. Players were also able to change the weather and the time of the day for free. When players changed the weather or the time, the effect were only visible on their monitor and not on the other player's monitors. The last options in the store were staff level functions. All staff members, no matter what level they are, could teleport to a chill out room. They could also take an official staff skin or a personal one. They made the personal ones themselves in paint. When the staff members used this skin, they were also immortal, but at the same time they could not use weapons themselves. This was also to prevent abuse. There was also an option to change the skin to a random skin. They could rid themselves of wanted stars. Take a nightstick weapon to send players to jail. I will come back to the arrests of the players later in the video. Staff members who were level 4 or higher could also activate a cheat that made zombies stop attacking them. And I will also come back to this when I talk about the zombies in the server later. Moderators and admins could also make themselves invisible for free with no time limit. This was useful for sneaky standing among other players to observe. This was still more exciting than spectating. And moderators and admins could also give themselves money. This option also had a very long timer to prevent abuse. Also in the store, players found the special features available to players who had the VIP or Royal rank on their account. I also set timers on the use of these functions to avoid abuse. VIPs could get 50% armor for free, 1 minute of free paintball bullets, 30 seconds of free smoke that players could use in combat. 60 seconds of the cheat to be a ghost at a very cheaper price, an armed RC tank as extra vehicle, and 3 AI bots who defended them or joined them to fight when they needed extra firepower. Royals did not get a 50% armor but a 100% armor free. Teleport bullets for 1 minute, also free, 7 seconds free invincibility, 30 seconds free immortality on their vehicle and a small private army of 8 units that also defended them or fight with them if they needed extra firepower. I was also working on a major rank but I didn't finish that. The commands. The bind keys and commands were also very important information to be aware of for useful functions. For example, you could open a menu to adjust the stun cam, which also had a slow motion function for every time you went off the ground with all wheels. You needed it to open the phone, the gang menu if you're a leader or member of a gang, the jumping chair for quickly escaping from vehicles, and also cruise control for cruising the streets comfortably. Players could do the Harlem Shake drop bouncing betty mines or regular mines, fart, spawn a free flying surfboard, or even fart more. Players could also use a space laser weapon, but this was also not for free. The rules. With all these features there were also some rules so everybody could find the fun they were looking for. Players would of course not allowed to spawn kill. They were not allowed to ask money from staff members. 
they certainly weren't allowed to beg for money from staff members. Players always had to follow the advice of the staff members. Players were not allowed to insult each other to keep it decent. Players were not allowed to advertise other servers. And the last rule, of course, was not to break any of the previous rules. The staff members had more rules and guidelines. It was not only a privilege to belong to the staff team, but you also had a kind of function. I will not go over all the rules, but if you want to watch them, you can pause the video and then you can see them all. Step there was also an island called Admin Island, where whoever at the admin rank had their own home. Vehicle stores. All over the map there were stores for vehicles. In Los Santos you could find one for cars, for motorcycles and at the beach one for boats. In San Fierro you could find one for planes, for helicopters and another one for cars or trucks from certain services in the game. In Las Venturas there was none, but in the army base you could buy the armed vehicles. Players could store up to 30 vehicles via the garage app on the phone. After buying a car, you could also pimp them through the car mod shops. When players had activated the car mods, they could use fewer functions of the car mod shops because of the mods that did not support these functions. But they still had enough options to make the car beautiful. Players could also go to the car bomb shops to install bombs on your or other vehicles. So you could choose from different types of bombs. Like a time bomb. A bomb that explodes in soft or hard collisions. A speed bomb. And much more. Imagine you see a new player. They ask you, how can I earn money? You tell them, you need to do a job. Here, you can use my car to get to a job. They say thank you and then you activate the bomb and they have to go on foot to the job location. <laughs> Racing. With all these vehicles, players love to race in one of the 38 street races around the map or in one of the special race maps. A race had to be organized on their own initiative. Once the racers were at the start line, one player had to start a countdown with a command so that the race could start. Often the races were friendly, but now and then money was put in as a bet and the winner received this via the PayPal app or on a smartphone. When a street race was activated, the route was made clear by neon arrows indicating directions. There were also other race locations that were then separate race tracks. Another race was the time race around the map. Here the racer or racers had to follow a route as quickly as possible that went completely around the map. There was also a sign with the best times of the race. That match. In any game of GTA where you can play online, solving situations with weapons is a habit that many players have. Oftentimes, these moments could move from one location to another on the map. But I had provided special maps where the players could fight these issues on an honorable way or where groups of players could play fun team deathmatches or normal deathmatches. Or just to take a challenge from another player to another and to see who's the best of the two. These locations, like most other activities, were available via teleports on the map which you could find via the map icons in the digital manual book. One of the skin mods I had was a worm from the Worms franchise. And then you had a bit of Worms 3D. Even with a jetpack. Gang Wars. When players wanted to fight against AI and not against players, this was also possible. There were gang wars for this. Each time an enemy was shot, the player received a cash reward. I had 58 gang wars spread all over the map. In these locations, players could activate the gang war and dispawn the enemies on the assigned locations. Players had to be patient and strategic if they wanted to take down all enemies without dying much themselves. These missions were often very difficult, 
but they paid well. Turf Wars Yet another way for players to fight issues was the Turf Wars. In order to participate in Turf Wars, players had to be members or leaders of a gang. You could create a gang via a menu. Via this menu you could also invite new members and also give members different ranks so that you could possibly appoint others to also search and invite new members. Other players often ask themselves if they could become a member of a certain gang. When you looked in the scoreboard, you could also see which player was in which gang. And when you went over a turf area, you also got to see which gang this turf has in its possession. Gang members used gang tags in their nickname and also had a gang color of their choice. Once a gang had taken over a turf, the color of his turf changed to the color of their gang as shown on the map or the radar. To take over a turf, gang members had to stand on the area for a certain amount of time. During this specific time, the members of the gang that owns the area were notified that their turf was under attack. So the members of the other gang could defend their turf. If the first gang managed to stay on the turf until the specified time is up, they would have taken over the turf. I have another unique story about turf wars that I personally experienced. I will also share a video about this in the video description if you wanna watch it. Fight Club And yet another way for players to fight over issues was the Fight Club. This script was originally for boxing matches, but I have adapted it to a Fight Club. Players could fight against each other here with their fist in the ring. Other players could also bet money on the fighters of the round and earn some extra money if they were lucky. The Fighting Tournament Another fighting activity on my server was the tournament. Here I made a large map with 20 areas, each in a unique style. In each area your character had opponents with different challenges. You could get one opponent in one area and several in another. A few areas had opponents that were almost completely invisible. Others had special weapons which you could immediately catch fire or fall on the ground. When a player had defeated an opponent, they were rewarded with a cash bonus. The map also contained towers where players could spectate the fights. This was a big project I've working on, but not the biggest yet. Relaxing After all this fighting, players also like to relax. We also had a cinema where players could watch YouTube videos together and even chat without annoying other players who just wanted to watch. There was also this water playground up north on the map where players could just hang out, spawn some boats and mess around. Players could also visit a small farmer's museum that also featured an interesting audio file about farmers and their habits. There were also many party clubs all over the map, more than 30 actually. Some of them mapped by myself and others were available on MTA's public community. I felt there couldn't be enough places to relax and each party club played a different style of music through internet radios. Players could not get drunk here or there were no specific activities here. This was purely to relax, just to share with other players. There was a DJ job, but I will come back to this later. There was also this simple activity where players had to make it to the end by jumping and climbing a parkour built out of haystacks. At the end players were rewarded for their endurance with money. The next thing was something treacherous, the ship to free money. Players who were on this ship had to stay on the ship. The ship then took 10 minutes to float to a location where players were awarded $35,000. This seems simple, right? Well, 
It didn't get that simple anymore when, for example, there were 20 players on the ship and a firefight started in the middle of the ride. Despite the easy and peaceful way to make money, it sometimes turned out to be a last man standing battle. There were also many locations where you could base jump. For example, I had placed 60 locations as base jump locations. Players who dared the jumps also received a small cash prize as a reward. As there were 60 different locations all over the map, this was also challenging for the players to do them all and to get a nice amount of money. I also made a special super difficult base jump map where players who made it to the end got paid more than with the other base jumps. The next activity was a bit adventurous. I had divided the entire map of the game into zones as you can see in the photo of the digital manual book. These zones are delimited with colored lines. There was an object hidden per zone and whoever found these objects received a lot of money. As an example, the blue zone. There was a dragon's head hidden. Whoever managed to find it got paid $500,000. In the green area, which became a bit more complicated to find the object, the object was a toilet. Whoever found the toilet got $1,500,000. There was also the Chinese vase hidden in the red zone. And the red zone was the entire map. Whoever found this vase received $3,500,000 as a prize. Once an object was found, it later spawned back at a different location in the assigned zone. This is why I cannot show you the objects, because I'm not gonna find them. It's gonna take a long time. And it's, it's taking a long time to make this video as well. So, you can see the objects on the pictures. When a player had found an object, a message appeared in the chat that a player had found an object and also how much money they had won, with a reference to the digital manual book. This stimulated other players to join the search. Another searching game was the Wanted Dead or Alive. Here you saw the characters that players had to search for, find and destroy on the left of the image. Once players had done this, they received a cash prize. This prize was not that high as it was not so difficult to find the characters. Here, the entire map was divided into squares with numbers and letters on the sides so that players could figure out where to look based on the details on the left. The wanted characters were also armed in different ways and did not hesitate to get ahead of you in your search for them. If a wanted character was defeated, he will spawn in the same square in a different location. Buying and renting houses. This was also something popular on MTA servers. Players earning enough money in the long run could reward themselves with possessions. It seemed like the script for the houses was currently not working on the current version of MTA, so unfortunately I can't show you that much. The players who did not have that much money could rent houses. At least if the owner wanted to turn on the rent option. When the rent was paid, the money went to the owner of the house. In the houses, players could also store weapons for later use. The admins on the server had a separated luxury island with helicopter platforms and villas. As the owner of the server, I had a separated island to myself. A small humble island. Slenderman in the years when I had my server online, Slenderman was a popular game, so I made my own version. A slightly confusing map with tunnels and rooms that were connected to each other. Players had to find the briefcases, and when they found it, they got money. But you could see Slenderman more often than the briefcases. And Slenderman was armed with miniguns or other weapons. Whoever shot Slenderman got an extra money bonus and when he was defeated, he'd spawn again on a different spot in the map. Alien vs Predator Alien vs Predator was just a small activity to have some fun with the skin mods. Whoever was going to do this activity got some friendly Predator bots to shoot the many incoming aliens together. 
For this activity, I also had provided a small map. Also, there was not much to do there, but this activity was still used a lot and it was a way to quickly earn some extra money. Sometimes, when many players did this activity, there was literally an army of predators. But also, a lot of aliens. So... Remember the Saw movies from Jigsaw's Traps? I made my own game on my server. And my version of Saw happened to be the hardest activity to complete on my server. Actually, I had made two Saw missions. But the first one was short and slightly misleading that the challenge disappeared after one or two times playing. This was not the case with my second Saw mission. It remained very challenging and confusing. Players could also do this together, but even then you weren't sure you were going to make it. Players started in a hallway that was divided into parts. The parts were timed to become accessible, but in the meantime the players already faced small challenges. Putting out fire, aggressive dogs, explosions, and this was just the beginning. The next space confused them with plants blocking the view while trying to find a way out. Players could also be hit by a sniper hidden in the bushes. Once they got into the next room, it was now a matter for looking out to find the next passage without getting explodes. And also enemies who were then tigers via skin mods. Once out of this hallway, they went to the top floor where they suddenly found themselves in a fight between 20 other participants of the Saw game, in a last man standing. The next step was to defeat Billy the Doll. And after a final hallway, the players entered the game's ultimate challenge. The HP sucking teleportation maze. After the previous trials, the players had to guess for the correct teleportation patterns. But not without danger. Each time they teleported, they lost 1 HP. Some teleports also had traps that caused them to get out of their route and be less able to decipher the pattern. Whoever died during this maze did spawn back at the beginning of the maze and not at the beginning of the mission. Anyone who managed to escape was rewarded with $111,111. Angry Birds 3D I also made my own version of Angry Birds for the players on the server. And this one was actually very nice. The players who started the activity changed into the skin of one of the birds and had to jump from platforms and springboards in a space with low gravity. All the way down was a ship they had to land on with an extra cash bonus. In the air between the takeoff and the boat were all floating objects to land on and to be able to main accurately for further jumps down. Between these jumps it was also the intention that you manage to catch stars and hippos and other icons. These icons also gave a cash bonus. Players who were new to my server sometimes couldn't believe their eyes. McDonald's I also had a small activity where players in a small fast food restaurant had to find hamburgers. But at the same time the clown from McDonald's was shooting the players. If the players could beat down the clown, they also got an extra cash boning, just like they got when they found the hamburger. Frogger The following was rather silly but still fun for a few minutes and this activity also brought in a little money. For this activity, players were supposed to take the little frog skin mod to cross the street with moving traffic just like the Frogger game. The players also had to pick up money bags that appeared here and there between the traffic. The players did not lose any HP to traffic but it was not that easy to get to the money bag sometimes. Zombies there were also a number of zones in the server where zombies could be found. Players could then shoot zombies together or alone. Players could also use their special armed vehicles to take on the zombies. Also for each zombie that a player shot dead, XP points were added. These XP points caused the player to level up. This then resulted in a status that was shown in the scoreboard. Through the map, 
The players could see the correct icons and that is how they got to the zombie zones. One zone was extra dangerous because it was hit by military missiles from the army base at the same time. There were also a couple of zombie zones in the world of Killuminati, which I will show you in a moment. Medics After all this zombie fighting, some people must have had some scratches. To heal, players could buy medkits via the store on the phone or buy some food in a restaurant. But who didn't want to spend minimum money to heal asked a medic to come and heal him. Medics were players who took the role of a medic. They had an ambulance and flowers which they used to heal the players by hitting them with soft gentle flowers. When they were healing somebody, they got paid. But not really so much. Medics were also very useful in certain missions that you don't play by yourself or in a deathmatch, turf wars and much more. Police, prison and robbing. In addition to the medical service, there was also a police service. Players could accept a job anywhere on the map where was a police office. They could also arrest other players who had wanted stars by hitting them with a nightstick. When this happened, the player who was police had to take the criminal to jail. At this point, the criminal had no control over his character's movements until he was in prison in his cell. The player who was police was also paid per arrest. You had to sit jail time based on the number of wanted stars. This variated from a few minutes to 20 minutes maximum. Players could obtain wanted stars by killing other players stealing their vehicles, certain jobs as breaking into houses or robbing the bank. Players also lost their wanted stars one by one as time passed. There was also a downside to the prison. For example, a friend of a player who was in jail could try to get into the police station and hack into the prison security with the computer. If he succeeded, he also received a money bonus. Once the hacking was complete, the prison gates opened. An alarm went off and all police officers were notified that there was an outbreak in the prison. All prisoners who then escaped from prison were immediately given the maximum numbers of stars and police members everywhere looked out for escapees. Those who could not be caught were lucky. Black Market and Gun Seller the black market was very useful because you could create weapons and ammo there for free. There were a few black markets in a few different locations. But they each had the same options. By waiting a few minutes after taking the assignment, the players received the promised items. Later, they could sell this ammo to other players. Anyway, the players could save some money by not buying ammo in the ammunition store and also earn extra money by selling the ammo. It was also not possible to use firearms at these black market locations. Caves and Mines The next two locations were also quite special. The first is a large cave and the second a gold mine. To get into the cave you had a few different entrances. And some of them also ended up dead, but were still worth to look. The cave was nicely finished with hallways underwater and hallways at the top edges. In the cave there was an activity where you had to search and find an ancient artifact. Whoever found this was also nicely paid. This artifact could be found everywhere in the cave. Underwater, in the edges, you had to search carefully. It was also required to use a grapple gun so that you could check all parts. The gold mine was also a nice detailed map where you first had to accept a job as a gold miner and then go down via the elevator. As you walked further into the mine, you got to see the location where you had to mine. You could also go deeper into the mine where you could mine gold as well. There was another entrance into the mines. And there you could fight against zombies in the mines. Summer Camp 
This place is called the Summer Camp. Just a peaceful place where players could do a couple of jobs to earn money. This was a simple job to hand out flyers to cabins for the camp. Another job was to place torches in the forest for some atmospheres when it got dark. And another job was planting... plants. There was also a hidden staircase route in the forest that took you to a character which gave you a free bottle of X. The World of Killuminati The World of Killuminati was my biggest project that I never finished by the way. It had to represent a separated world, inspired by World of Warcraft with different regions where different races were. A few missions were already available per region. So it was not finished, but there was still enough on it that it makes the effort to show. In the Killuminati world, you had the humans, the orcs, the elves, and a few other locations. There was also a farm where cows were kidnapped by aliens. The Killuminati world was accessible from several locations in the north of the map. Teleportation locations also brought you to one of the locations in the world of Kiluminadi, like this one brought you to the farm. The cows on this farm were endangered by aliens who abducted them into their UFO. It was up to the player to save the cows by activating the missions and then shooting the aliens. Whenever an alien was defeated, the player received money. There were also a few zombie locations that, like on the map, were marked with a normal map icon for zombies and not with a map icon for World of Illuminati. One of these two zones was a bit more challenging than most of the others, only because it took place on a slope. The second one, there was a mission associated with it. It was not so difficult, rather for fun and easy for money. You had to leave an option here and there that players could experience so that they could more easily make money to spend on the server afterwards. So you always had to walk to a location in this zone to cause explosions. It was also best to lure zombies around you first to hit as many zombies as possible with the explosions. In addition to the money bonus per zombie kill, you also received an extra money bonus per explosion. The first village we get to see is the People Village, and this was located on top of a mountain. There was also a long viewing bridge attached so that they always had a good overview of their domain. This bridge also had a job as a guard. Here the player simply had to move from waiting point A to waiting point B, the job of a classic watchman. Another job you could do with people was helping a farmer to harvest his plants. You always had to go a long way for this, but you also got paid very well for it. The next village is the village of the orcs, the largest of all villages on this map. In this village, one job was already available. Since the orcs would be at war with the elves, the job was to ask you to bomb the elves their village. Elven village was a bit smaller, but you already had one job available, and this was to overpower the orcs that invaded their village. Hidden somewhere on the map, there was a special mission called the Million Dollar Light. Players who accepted this mission had to search the entire map of the world of Kiluminati without any clues for a big yellow light. When they found it, they won one million dollars. A little further from this mission was a very small village at the Little Creek. This village also had two missions, one of which was looking for starfishes in the stream and the other job was stunting with a stunt car. The marketplace was protected by high walls. Here was a church where you could enter. There was nothing special to do in the church but outside the church there was a number of jobs that were available. This way you could do a different guard job on these high walls of the marketplace. But you had to make sure you didn't fall off. Another job you could find there was cutting trees. Near the marketplace was a small house where you could do a few mini-missions. 
so you had to find an invisible item in a small area. And if you found this you also won money of course. Another game was the arrow tool. Here you had to get to the end of the route by following the arrows. Here too you encountered challenges such as climbing and enemies that you had to defeat. Too bad I never finished this project, but the players had a lot of fun on it anyway. The other jobs. The next thing I'll go through are the other jobs we haven't seen earlier in the video. To begin with, the players could be paid by other players as pilots of a plane or drivers of a taxi or a limousine. Players could also keep the streets of Los Santos clean by signing up as a street cleaner. Or making sure that people in remote areas in the north do not get disconnected from TV or internet by doing the cable guy job. This job required that you use a grapple gun or some other means to reach the required height. Another job similar to cable guy is the billboard cleaner. Players could also sign up as a trucker for the long rides that brought in a lot of money. Players could then choose an order that they should deliver and leave with a new order after their arrivals. To get back to the party clubs from earlier, there was also a DJ job where you had to go from club to club to keep the party going. There was also a similar job as a dancer. Near the harbor in Los Santos, a ship had capsized and players could also get paid by removing the mess in the water. Here the players had to swim and climb to the pointed locations. There was also a construction yard where a very tall building was under construction, with an Eiffel Tower next to it. You could climb this Eiffel Tower to the top and there was also a base jump available. In the construction yard there was also a job where you had to move from one place to another on the side. The nice thing about this was that many of these places were in the many high and lower floors of the building, so the players had to check floor by floor. This place was also popular for self-organized battles. You could also go to a small remote forest where a small hunter job was available. Here the players had to hunt little rabbits. But nothing is what it seemed. The rabbits did not hesitate to attack you too. And the forest was also protected by a protector and he would find you very quickly. Another small mysterious job was the ghost hunter job where players had to find and eliminate invisible ghosts with the help of wall hack. The job at this place was building pyramids. Unfortunately I couldn't find the mod of the pyramids anymore so you can't see it right now. But the intention was for the players to build the pyramids. Here were also armed serpents that protected the site against anyone who was working on the construction. There was also a mission where you had to fly a UFO to the army base to attack them. To start this job you had to go into the mothership and accept the mission there. At the top of Mount Chiliad was a giant fortress with a job where the players had to bomb the fortress. There were also two small missions where you had to travel a mountain bike or a special RC vehicle from one side to the map to the opposite side to get paid nicely at the end. Other players could overpower the driver and take over the vehicle. Who took the vehicle to the other side was paid. This was about the most from what the players could do on my server.
I am sure that I have forgotten a number of things. Not the 100% of the content of my server was indicated in the digital manual book, but almost 95% was. The only thing I can now show you are the skin mods for the characters, vehicles and weapons. Well, this was it. A long video if you ask me, but also an appreciated visualized memory for all the players and staff members at that time. Everything you saw in this video was from the latest version of my server. Before it was this, it was still different, with many missions that I cannot add in this video. Maybe in the future I will also make a video about the old version, but I'm not sure now. I'm already happy that I finished this video. <laughs> Well, thank you all for the fun back then and for watching this video. I will close the video with footage of the mods I was using in my server. See you later everybody. Salut!